Biophysics is the application of uh, the tools of physics to explain, understand and predict biological processes. This can be done at different uh, scales, can be done at the molecular level, can be done at the cellular level, can be done even uh, higher level like organismal or uh, even population level. There is a very broad range of time and length scales involved. If we can model biomolecular systems at different resolution, we can understand how they work, we can in principle predict their behavior, and that allows us to understand also when they don't work. In order to do this upscaling from finer to coarse resolution, we use coarse graining. If you do it bottom up, you go from the equation of physics, the fundamental equation of physics regulating the atomic system, you coarsen it, coarsen it, coarsen it, up to the level or up to the resolution you want. Mathematically is well defined, but in practice is not easy. At Microsoft Research AI for Science, we are trying to bring the deep learning revolution to the natural sciences. So deep learning has had a huge impact on classical computer science disciplines like text and image processing, for example. And basically now we're trying to do the same for natural sciences, to take all the data that is available in this discipline, find patterns and commonalities. It's extremely interdisciplinary. So you have to have a lot of knowledge in the scientific field, let's say biophysics and protein science in the case of uh, Professor Clementi's work and also in the computational sciences. And you have to be able to bring these together. So you really have to have an interdisciplinary team where you, all of the knowledge is sort of represented. And this is actually why we have hired Tachili as a visiting researcher to bring this knowledge into our team. We can use two main directions. And one is bottom up. When we start from detailed representation, in our case it's atomistic representation, and we coarse grain it to our desired resolution. We can complement this approach with top-down approach. When we start from relatively low resolution experimental data and inform our model and make it better describe the reality we, we want it to do. You can think of it as solving a jigsaw puzzle. Experimental data give us some pieces and the model sees those pieces and fills the rest of the picture. Once we have such models, we can ask a lot of interesting questions. For example, what is the mechanism that is consistent with observations? Or what are the features of the model itself that are crucial to correctly describe the phenomenon at hand? A lot of the group's efforts have been devoted to designing a so-called transferable coarse grain model, where we would uh, learn these interactions from all atom data on a specific set of proteins, and then build a model that, as it is, uh, would be able to simulate uh, the thermodynamics of many different proteins that were not used for its parameterization. The hope is that there exists some kind of universal rule on the interactions between these amino acids that we can learn from a restricted set of data uh, and uh, that would allow the model to make accurate predictions on other proteins uh, not in a training set. We often uh, collaborate with uh, other theoretical groups and with teams that make use of more traditional experimental approaches in order to explore uh, complex biological processes uh, at the molecular and atomic level. While we mainly concentrate on basic science, I can definitely see some real-world applications, for example, in the uh, design of novel biomaterials and in uh, drug design. For both of these, uh, it is necessary to have a deep understanding of biological interactions, and this is only achievable if the underlying theoretical models are accurate and efficient. One of the main challenges is the need for computational power. Especially in deep learning, we've seen in recent years, it seems that the more training data you have, the more parameters your model has, the better it becomes. The training of a model, the generation of uh, training data or the simulation of a model is very energy expensive. So in order to limit the development time of our project and also to limit the environmental impact, we try to 
optimize the computational power that we need as good as possible. If you have a transferable coarse grain model, this kind of modeling becomes very cheap, even for uh, very slow biological processes that are for now inaccessible to simulation. Potential applications include uh, drug discovery, uh, so uh, basically the development of pharmaceuticals, of drugs to cure specific diseases. This includes the development of protein drugs such as antibodies, uh, which are now commonly worked on in cancer research, for example, and also uh, protein design more general. So trying to de design proteins to fold into specific shapes to bind to, to, to other proteins or other biomolecules well. Another application is development of molecular machines. Proteins evolved in an incredible way. They perform a lot of different functions. They can move cargo across the cell. They can act as rotor motors. That they can open and close gates. And if we understand how this whole machinery works, we can apply those lessons to our design. One of the aspects of our work that is very exciting is that it's very interdisciplinary. We have a team of uh, physicists, chemists, machine learners, computer scientists, mathematicians, biologists. And uh, for people who are uh, interested in uh, the inter interdisciplinary environment, I think we can offer a very good mix of disciplines. My hope is that with the tools we are developing to bridge resolutions from uh, the atomistic level up to the cellular level, we can define a very robust and systematic approach that can describe systems of every site.